before you teach anyone entrepreneurship, you gotta first confirm that they have what it takes, that you know you have what it takes out there. And so what I've learned in 30 years of doing this is there are six essential traits that every true entrepreneur has. Next up, representing Primal Life Organics, Josh Making Bank Felber. Welcome to Making Bank. I am Josh Felber, where we uncover the mindset and the success strategies of the top 1% so you can amplify your life and your business. I hope you guys are paying attention. This is an entrepreneurial guest. He's going to be able to dive into some amazing insights to help you today. So I want you guys to get out your pen, your paper, get everything and start listening and start watching this episode. It's going to be amazing. My guest today, he's an entrepreneur since the age of 21. Gino has had an obsession for learning what makes businesses and entrepreneurs thrive. At 25, he took over his family business, which was deeply in debt and in need of help. And after turning the company around and running it for seven years, he and his partner successfully sold the company. Gino then set out to help entrepreneurs and leaders get what they wanted from their business. Based on his years of real world experience, he created the Entrepreneurial Operating System, EOS, a practical method for helping companies achieve greatness. He has personally delivered more than 1,900 full day sessions for more than 135 companies, helping them implement EOS. He is also the author of the award winning best selling book, Traction Get a Grip on Your Business as well as Get a Grip, Rocket Fuel, How to Become a Great Boss, and What the Heck is EOS, which have all sold more than 1 million copies. Gino is the founder of EOS Worldwide, an organization that helps tens of thousands of businesses implement EOS with the aid of an international team of over 350 professionals and certified EOS implementers and online support. There is almost 100,000 companies using EOS tools worldwide. Gino is now devoting his time and energy in helping entrepreneurs like you in the making, getting a huge jump start on taking their entrepreneurial leap, which is why he created Entrepreneurial Leap. The mission of the Entrepreneurial Leap is to find all the entrepreneurs in the making at any age, wherever they are, to help them realize their purpose and live the life they were born to live. Super excited and honored to welcome Gino Wickman to Making Bank today. Thank you, Josh. Pleasure to be here and really looking forward to this. For sure. An honor to have you on the show. And actually, super cool. I had um, uh, David Lichach, uh from Dreamwater, who runs the South Florida Miami EOS and everything on nice. uh, a few weeks ago. So Great to hear. So nice to hear. Um, but yeah, I guess, t um, so I kind of noted a little bit of your background in the intro, um, taking over the family business, building it up and selling it. But kind of um, really kind of give us kind of some of that insights when you got started, um, you know, as an entrepreneur at 21. Yeah, sure. So um, it was not a it was definitely an imperfect uh, path and process. So I'll back up a little further than that, because I did not go to college. So I graduated high school with a solid 2.3 GPA. Academics were not for me. I could not wait to get out of high school. There was no way I was going to college. And so as my friends all went up to college, I just wanted to go to work and I, I, I kind of knew how I learned and academics were not the way that I learned. And so I got educated my own way, actually went to work in a machine shop, busted my ass for three and a half years, 61 hours a week, saved up some money, saved up $8,500 and then took my entrepreneurial leap and failed a bunch of times. I was going to open a corporate <laughs> travel agency. I went to work for one to learn the business and in six months said, there's no way I'm getting in this industry. I got into mail order, I got into real estate investment, and it was all through that, that all of these kind of trials and tribulations that I found myself in real estate. As agents were making the commission off me, I decided to get my license. I was still kind of bumping along. I found myself in the real estate industry selling real estate and did very well for myself, making a six-figure income as a 23-year-old. 
and uh, fell in love with my dad's business. And so my dad had created a training program in that industry that helped train real estate agents how to make six figure incomes. And I just, like I said, fell in love with his company. I set a goal for myself that I'm gonna be a, the president of his company someday. He did not want his kids in the business. And so that wasn't an option. But his partner was, was enamored with me and we really got along and he convinced my dad to get me into the business. But what my dad said to me is he said, if you want in, you gotta go sell $5 million in real estate and then you can come and talk to me. So I went and did exactly that. It took me about a year and a half to hit that annualized number. And, uh, and I started at the bottom of the business. Making I went from making a six figure income to 25 grand a year. That's the <laughs> first time I went broke. And, uh, but I worked my way up in a year and a half and I took over that business. I replaced the prior president. The company was in dire need of a turnaround. And I was such a sponge for knowledge through that whole whirlwind thing I just shared with you. I really thought I could save this company. And then as I took over, I was armed with two great mentors, my dad, an incredible entrepreneur, and a gentleman by the name of Sam Cup, an incredible businessman. And I was just, again, a sponge for knowledge. I turned that business around in three years, uh, ran it for seven years, and then there were three partners. We each owned a third. We decided to sell the business and successfully sold the business. So that's a little more than what you asked, but that's the messy journey. And I really didn't realize I was an entrepreneur until I was like 29 years old. And that's, <laughs> that's the reason I wrote the book we're gonna talk about later is I, I'm teaching my 18 year old self what, what I wish I would have known back then because I was lost, a mislabeled derelict. I was so confused and here I was this entrepreneur in the making and I just didn't realize that and I just felt so screwed up and I was just figuring it out every step of the way. No, that's, that's awesome. I know for me, it was like I've started at 14 is what I call the first real business and it was a computer business. So I, I'm right there with you and you're making all the mistakes. Entrepreneurship back then wasn't all kind of glamorized as it is now and everybody exactly. says they are one and <laughs> so exactly. Exactly. give me a little insights then um just so everybody knows because i in introed the bio and stuff and talked about eos and i mean i guess tell everybody what eos is and why you created that yeah yeah so when i was running the family business and turning it around and uh doing the work i was doing got it growing again got it out of that debt and and really got it running like a Swiss watch, I learned a lot. And I, what I learned, in addition to all these wonderful business insights, and again, through that seven-year run, I was such a sponge for knowledge. I mean, I was so obsessed with work and learning. I mean, it was, it was crazy. Obsessed with, is an understatement. But so I, so I realized, number one, business and, and the kind of the science behind business, I was a member of EO, uh, known as YEO back then for okay. eight years, and I found myself helping my entrepreneurs organization brethren, if you will, and had this knack for that. And then I was also in Dan Sullivan's strategic coach program. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and I just had a light bulb moment and said, I, I am on this, I am on the face of this earth to help entrepreneurs. And so upon selling the business, I then set out to do just that. And so when all the dust settled, sold the business. I stayed on for a year and a half. I got out of a three-year contract like in a year and seven months early. Thank God. I told them every day, I'm ready to go. I want out. I could not work for somebody. It was excruciating. And so anyway, right around age 31, I then took this leap into helping entrepreneurs. Had no idea what it was going to look like. I just knew that that's what my passion was. That's what my purpose was. And so with that, for the first five years, I basically tested, honed, refined everything I learned on about 50 companies, 500 sessions over five years, and ultimately after five years put the finishing touches on what is now EOS, the Entrepreneurial Operating System, and it just helps an entrepreneur with a 10 to 250 person business uh, go from great, go from good to great, become more successful, run it like a Swiss watch, become more free, just all the wonderful benefits of owning your own business. And then I decided to leverage it. And so I joined forces with a partner, Don Tinney. Uh, he ended up earning up to 30% of the business by the time we sold. And we built that business to where we now have 375 EOS implementers all over the world, 100,000 companies wow. using the system. And he and I sold that business two and a half years ago. And I sold it because I wanted to free up capacity for this next project uh, that we're going to talk about. And that's Entrepreneurial Leap. And what I'm doing after this three decades of obsessing about entrepreneurs and business and success is I'm now going to the front end of the entrepreneurial journey 
and I'm helping entrepreneurs in the making discover what they are and, and get a bigger, better jump start on taking their entrepreneurial leave and starting a better startup, as I like to say. Awesome. So like for me, you know, I, I didn't have entrepreneurial parents around. And so, you know, I just kind of, I think fell into entrepreneurship, hustling, like cutting grass and those kind of different things. And, and then one day, and we had a, my dad had bought a computer and then one day Commodore came out with their Commodore Amiga. You probably remember. And it, it was like the high tech computer back then, like what all the gaming stuff is now. And I'm like, Oh, there's gotta be a better way than the 800. I think it was $795 or something like that. Then to buy this for that much. And I was like, Oh, it's figuring out distribution and wholesale. So I got set up as a, is a, a Commodore Amiga dealer and then started people were like, Hey, what'd you get? And so it kind of just spurred into a business that I had and that kind of got me kicked off and then reading Tony Robbins and uh, Napoleon Hill when I was a kid. And that really kind of got my mentorship going. And I know there's a lot of kind of back and forth these days more about, you know, are you born an entrepreneur? Are you nurtured into being an entrepreneur? And so, uh, and that was kind of one of the things I took from your entrepreneurial elite book initially is you kind of start talking about that. So I'm curious in kind of what your thoughts are on this as well. Yeah, well, I, ha I have some uh, very um, uh, strong beliefs on this topic. <laughs> it's, it's, I'll try to put it in a nutshell, but, but the book is written in three parts, confirm, glimpse, path. And what we're talking about right now is that first First part, confirm, because what I believe is before you teach anyone entrepreneurship, you got to first confirm that they have what it takes, that you know you have what it takes out there. And so what I've learned in 30 years of doing this is there are six essential traits that every true entrepreneur has. They are visionary, passionate, problem solver, driven, risk taker, and responsible. And I believe you are born with them. I believe it is absolutely nature over nurture. They can't be taught. That's why they are traits. And so with that, half the world agrees with me and half the world doesn't. The good <laughs> news is, you know, all the entrepreneurs I've been surrounded by for 30 years all agree with me. So I, I prefer that my target market, you know, what they think is sure. all that matters to me. So, but it is a debatable topic because the other half of the world doesn't agree with me. And I love when I have this conversation with college professors because half agree with me and half don't, you know? And so yeah. that's a fascinating dynamic when you get into, you know, how they make their living. So I just don't believe that you can teach 7.5 billion people on this planet how to become entrepreneurs. I believe it's a sin. I believe it's wrong. And, and right now, being an entrepreneur is the new rock star. You know, in right. the 70s and 80s, we all wanted to be rock stars. Yeah. Well, now everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. So with that said, I'm going to share another context that's going to take a little bit of the sting off what I'm sharing. But there's no question that not everyone is cut out for this. I believe 4% of the world is cut out for this. Hmm. And so I know that's defeating for anyone out there that realizes this. There's an assessment you can take on my website, and we can get into that later. It's free. It takes you 10 minutes. If you score 90 or higher, you probably have these six essential traits. But the point here is I am actually, it's a cautionary tale. I'm trying to save you 10 years of hell. It is so hard being an entrepreneur. You get your ass kicked. You get knocked down so much. Everybody thinks that entrepreneurship is this ultimate pinnacle in life. And it's just right. not. It's, it's a career choice. It's one of 10,000 career choices. And the good news is if you're not one, you know, you just get to check that box and say, okay, that's not for me. And then go pick one of the other 9,999. You're one step closer to knowing why you're on this earth. And, and, and then I'll say one last thing to, to this takes a little bit of the sting off, but I teach something in the book called the entrepreneurial range. And this, if there's any message that comes through in this podcast for your audience, I hope it's this. And so I love that you told them to have something to write with and on everybody out there, please. Writing is the best thing you can do. You'll retain better. So I hope you all listen to Josh and you've got a, something to write on and with. But if you'll illustrate in front of you or picture in your mind an, an arc, if you will, again, I call it the entrepreneurial range. And this arc, if you'll write on the far right hand side, the words true entrepreneur and on the far left hand side, if you'll write the words self-employed. OK, and so the point here is anyone that owns their own business is somewhere on that entrepreneurial range. And if you think about the entrepreneurs on the far, the business owners on the far right hand side, the ones that red light in that range, these are the Elon Musk and the Walt Disney's and the Henry Ford's, Oprah sure. Winfrey, Sarah Blakely. 
On the far left-hand side, self-employed people, these are the one-person shows, the people with a side hustle, the solopreneurs, the, the, the freelancers, the people with lifestyle businesses. So if you own a business, you're somewhere on that range, and it's admirable. If, 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 if you don't have these essential traits, but you have great handy skills, there's no reason you can't go become a great handyman or woman, charge 60 bucks an hour, make 100 grand a year, and, and have your own business and have total freedom, that ain't all bad. Right. What I will tell you is the person that does that, if you have the six essential traits, within five to 10 years, you're gonna own a construction company because your brain can't not stop you from building a business out of that. But for the rest of you, it's okay to have that one person show. You're probably just not gonna be on that right half of the range. And that's what the people with the six essential traits do. They, have, they are on the right half of that range. Hopefully that makes sense and answers your question. Yeah, no, definitely. And so basically then out of those six traits, the visionary, passionate, problem solver, driven, risk taker, and responsible, um, you're saying then as an entrepreneur, you ha you're having all of those. It's not like, cool, you have four of them, but not you know the other two. It is all or nothing, okay? And so again, another little punch in the gut for somebody else out there, but it's all or nothing. And they're not like weighted differently. They are all equally weighted, believe it or not, responsible as as vital as visionary, as hard as that is to believe at first. Sure. Um, but they're all equally weighted and it's an all or nothing deal. Yeah, that's interesting too, because I remember back and whenever I've been on podcasts, people always ask, oh, you know, what, what's helped you? And you know, I've had 15 companies over the years and some small and some bigger that I've sold and stuff. And so, you know, but I've always been like, I've, risk has never bothered me. I go into it and just get it done. And I'm not like, oh, is I'm worried about this or well, th what if this happens or what if this happens? And so I know that. <laughs> so, that, and then the driven part, I mean, I, I fit all of those, which is, you know, which is interesting. I was, I was like, huh, okay. Yeah, I, I have no doubt you <laughs> tick every one of those six boxes. And, and to touch on the assessment, you know, at this point, I think it's great to share. Please go take the assessment on the website, e-leap.com. It's free. It's 10 minutes of your life. And there's also the first 30 pages of the book for free, and it'll start to give you a teaching on what we're talking about. And if it sucks you in, you know, please buy the book. But there's two free tools right there that are going to help you answer some questions about yourself. I promise you I'm sharing this to help you not to break your heart. Because if you do have the six essential traits, look out, baby, because the next is to then show you a glimpse of what's possible and a path to greatly increase your odds of success. Cool. So then, um, so you had mentioned, yeah, the next part, you know, kind of that you put together then is the glimpse. And then is that kind of then the overview of what's going to happen as an entrepreneur? Or I guess give us a little insights there. Yeah. Yeah. So not quite because what glimpse is all okay. about, it's really, it's really three major pieces. Number one is just giving a ton of real world stories about entrepreneurs in the making who were right where you are and how they built what they built. Number two, it's about showing you a day in the life, okay? And it's it's from a standpoint of the dream and the nightmare, heaven and hell. I give you both perspectives because sadly, most entrepreneurs are living the nightmare. And, and the point in that, if I can show you that and you can see it in vivid color, you're more likely to avoid it. But then I show you the eight most common mistakes that almost every startup entrepreneur makes mm -hmm. and how to avoid every single one of them so that you live the dream. That's That's my passion. I'm trying to pull entrepreneurs out of ignorance and suffering because they're making silly mistakes that aren't necessary. Uh, and I learned all of that over 30 years and with EOS and what we've done with our clients. The third piece is probably the piece I'm most excited about, and it's called My Biz Match, okay? Okay. And My Biz Match is another free tool. This takes about 20 minutes. You go to the website, you click on a bunch of buttons, and it's, what it's going to tell you is it's going to tell you the perfect business for you. It's going to tell you the business you're built for. It's going to tell you what you're drawn to. Because when it comes to you choosing a business as an entrepreneur, every entrepreneur cannot succeed in every business. It's, right. It doesn't work that way. And so the truth of the matter is there's an industry that is appealing to you or a handful. And then there's a type of business that's appealing to you. So when I say that, there are two types of entrepreneurs. There are product entrepreneurs and there are service entrepreneurs. And you've got to know which one you are. And this is going to help you create clarity around that. 
I have utter disdain for product businesses. I'm a service entrepreneur. Inventory gives me the heebie-jeebies. I can't <laughs> look at a million dollars in inventory. It freaks me out. The next thing is, are you a B2B entrepreneur? Are you a B2C entrepreneur? Do you love selling to businesses? You love selling to consumers. Those sales processes, those marketing and sales processes are very, very different. Mm -hmm. And then last, are you high price, low volume, or are you low cost, high volume? Two very different business models. And so for me, I want to be the highest price in town, the highest value, most expensive. That's just what I'm drawn to. And then the last piece of all this is how big of a business, what size, because what I'm doing with my biz match is I'm helping the entrepreneur and the making realize all of the options for business because they're all being sold that becoming a tech billionaire unicorn startup is the only entrepreneurial path when that's like one tenth of one percent. Sure. So there's like a thousand other options and there's nothing wrong with building a three million dollar heating and cooling company. And so... With that said, it just helps you figure out what you're drawn to. And so Glimpse is all about showing you this vivid image of what life could be like and what's available. And so when you confirm you're an entrepreneur and you get that glimpse, holy shit, you're lit up, you're ready to go. And now it's time to show you the path to get there. Awesome. Well, yeah, and it's kind of funny you mentioned, you know, you try to want to be like the highest price, you know, the best, you know, out there. Um, when I launched uh, my CrossFit gyms back in 2010, we looked at the whole market and everybody was like $99 unlimited and stuff like that. And we're like, all right, we're going to be, you know, 249 if you want unlimited, you know, and I think 125 was our lowest for two days a week. And literally we grew that uh, and we had full-time coaches, best equipment on, and we literally grew it from zero to over 400 members in about 18 months, just under seven figures and using that same philosophy there. So congratulations. So important that, you know, and that tool is going to help, you know, for sure. Uh, and so you mentioned, um, there was, uh, eight critical mistakes. What, um, I guess kind of, what are some of those mistakes that you commonly see that businesses, uh, keep running into? Yeah. And here's what I love to do. I'm going to rip through all eight and you okay. pick the or two because you know your audience better than I do, but cool. here are the eight most common mistakes. Number one, not having a vision. Number two, hiring the wrong people. Number three, not spending time with your people. Number four, not knowing who your customer is. Number five, not charging enough. Number six, not staying true to your core. Number seven, not knowing your numbers. And number eight, not crystallizing roles and responsibilities. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I would maybe dive into not spending time with your people. Be, I mean, my wife and I own a pretty significantly sized personal care products business that we make everything right here and sell all around the world. And we have yeah. 20 people on our team. So always yeah. curious on that one. <laughs> Great one. So so each one of these eight critical mistakes, I've experienced, experienced them at least 100 times with my clients. And then we've now taken almost 10,000 companies through the EOS process that I created. So this is what we see happening with almost every 10 to 250 person company having made those mistakes during startup and then having mm. to repair them. And so not spending time with your people, the issue that goes on the issues list and the issue they always raise in almost every case is communication. Lack of communication is one of their biggest problems they're faced with. And it's amazing because the solution is so simple. And so the point is almost every company is suffering from this if they don't know how to solve it. And so it's this simple. It's three things. Meet with your people weekly. Meet with your people quarterly. And give feedback often. That's mm. it. And I promise you it will solve 95% of your communication problems as somebody who's starting their business. What happens is you as the entrepreneur, you start the business, you get running, you start bringing people into the business. Sure. And those people are just following your passion and your lead. And they're just following your orders at first. But that can only last so long. At some point, you've got to stay. You got to keep the circles connected. You got to stay on the same page. You got to stay in sync. And so if you just meet with your direct team every single week, every single quarter and give feedback. Even if I didn't tell you the agenda for those meetings, if you just do that and sit in a room and stare at each other, you will solve your communication problems. But certainly in my teaching with EOS, I teach an agenda for a weekly meeting. I teach an agenda for a quarterly meeting. So I don't want to go into that level of nitty gritty detail. Yes. Just do that and it will solve your problems right out of the shoot about communication. 
Super cool. Um, okay, so then you said then the third part of everything was the path. And so that's the whole process then is what we were talking about. Exactly. So with path, what I do in path is I'm going to rip high level through each chapter so you can kind of get a sense of the context and then we'll drill down on a couple of things. But in path, what I'm doing is I'm now showing you the way as the entrepreneur in the making who has now confirmed that you are, who now knows and has a pretty good idea of the business you want to build. What I talk about is college or not, first of all, because if you're if you're 17 or younger, you have a very important decision to make for yourself, whether college is worth it or not for you as an entrepreneur. And I give you all of the facts. I then show you how to discover your passion. I then show you how to find a mentor. I then teach the power of 10-year thinking. I then teach eight disciplines to greatly increase your odds of success and then show you the nine stages of growing your business. And so all of that kind of shows a path away because the reality is there is no process for starting a business. They are all so messy and so crazy and so scary. Anybody trying to teach you a perfect process with all due love and respect, they're selling you a bill of goods <laughs> yeah. because it's a wild ride. And if there is a process you're looking for, here's what I've discovered in looking at every business I've ever looked at. It's a four-step process. Step one, you have an idea. Step two, you take your leap. Step three, you get your ass kicked for 10 years. Step four, you emerge an entrepreneur, hopefully, because there's a 90% chance you won't be in business in 10 years. So that's if you're looking for a process, there it is. So what PATH does is it gives you what I believe all of the knowledge you need to greatly increase your odds of success and eliminate half the mistakes you're going to make. So, so that's PATH, but there's one nugget I want to drill down on PATH sure. because in each one of those three parts, confirm, glimpse, PATH, there's one powerful tool within each one that if you literally finish listening to this podcast and go do these three things that we call one, two, three roadmap. It'll be the best thing you can do for yourself. And it's only going to take you an hour. So number one, we talked about take the assessment. Yep. Number two, we talked about fill out my biz match. Number three, download my vision clarifier and just mm. fill that out. It takes you through eight aspects of your business. It's about how to create a vision for what you want, it forces you to think about the eight most important things about the business you're gonna build. And what it will do is create absolute clarity. That's the number one word that comes out of one, two, three roadmap, clarity. You'll now know all the right questions to ask your mentors, your guides, your advisors, or what information to seek. And so it's called My Vision Clarifier. Okay. And then anything else that jumped out at you in path, hit me with it and we'll drill down as deep as you want to drill down for your audience. Awesome. Hey guys, just so guys let you guys know while you're taking notes, I mean, right down below the video here is those three links that Gino just mentioned. So you guys can click on those. It's step one, two, three, hit those up, fill those out. I know as soon as we're done here, well, I got one more podcast, but as soon as I'm done with that one, I'm going to go back, fill those out just to dive in and uh, check all that uh, out. So it's super cool. You mentioned um, the eight disciplines. Yeah. That, you know, increase the odds of success. So we got a lot of entrepreneurs watching. Let's maybe dive into some of those eight disciplines um, that you've found and how they can start applying those or implementing some of that. Yeah. And so in the interest of time, I'll pick one or two for you because yeah. this one seems to be, I don't know what it is about this last three to six months, but this one keeps getting picked. So I'm just going to pick it for you. But, but discipline number two is to decide if you are a partner person. Mm. Okay. So this is so important after having to help clients unwind partnerships, which can be very ugly. Sure. You as an entrepreneur out there, you have to decide what kind of an entrepreneur you are. There's two types. You are either an entrepreneur that should never have a partner. You should own 100% of your business, and that works phenomenally. Okay, I've got lots of clients that own 100% <laughs> of their business. Or you're the type of entrepreneur that should have partners. Okay, And within that, there's two types of entrepreneurs that should have partners. One is equal partnership. So you're the kind of entrepreneur, if there's two of you, 50-50, three of you, third, third, and a third, you need equal partners. You're all carrying the same load. Or you're a partner entrepreneur that is comfortable giving up equity, but you want to maintain control. That's the kind of entrepreneur I am. I'll always maintain control. I have to have the final say. I'm the ultimate decision maker that's non-negotiable, but I'm willing to give up equity to others so they share in the rewards. And so the point here is you must decide now what you are, because if you figure this out five years from now, after you got into a partnership, 
it's going to be such a mess. So you got to know which, which kind you are. And then again, I just kind of teach that and create some awareness and give some examples in the book around that. So your gears are turning as to what type of an entrepreneur am I? So you make the right decision now. And, and there's this, it just seems to be this movement for like, everybody's like, collaborating and partnering, you don't have to do that, okay? So it's okay to own 100% of your business. And you pointed to yourself, Josh, so you own 100% of your business, right? And I've had partners and I've always had issues. <laughs> exactly. And I share one great story in the book with one guy who had a partner. He said, listen, I learned very quickly after that, I am not partnership material. So what the, the message I want to hear is if you're 100% own your own business, no partnership kind of a person. There's nothing wrong with that. And I, I feel like there's almost this undertone of there's, you're selfish or something when not at all, okay? Uh, so that works and it works well. Just decide what you are. Um, and, and, now, and you tell me if you want to go to one more, but that's that'd be the one that jumps out and it's been the hottest one as of late. Cool. No, that's awesome. No, and, and then I think uh, we got just a couple minutes left. So uh, you mentioned too about uh, preparing the nine stages of uh, building their business. Yeah, yeah. What's one of those that really stand out that makes a significant impact, um, you know, for an entrepreneur? Yeah, this one, I think the one that gets picked the most is stage number two, which is hiring an integrator. Okay. Yeah. And so I created a concept 25 years ago called the visionary integrator concept. And I've written a book around it called Rocket Fuel. And so the point here is, if you're a true entrepreneur with those six essential traits, someday you're going to need an integrator because you are wild and crazy. You're not great at running the day, to day of a business. You're not great at holding people accountable. And what an integrator does for you is it frees you up to be in your sweet spot and grow the company to the next level. And that integrator is running the day to day for the business, runs the business like a Swiss watch, executes your vision. And so what you have to do is decide where on your entrepreneurial journey do you want to bring your integrator in. If you read Rocket Fuel, it will teach you how to do that. Um, if you ever want to do a podcast with my co-author, Mark Winters, he does all the Rocket Fuel podcasts on this concept. Great, fun topic. So some entrepreneurs are savvy enough to, to start their business and partner with an integrator right out of the chute. So they do it immediately. And whether that's right. hiring an integrator or partnering... Some wait till they reach a certain stage. And then my most extreme story is one of my clients did not hire their integrator until they hit 100 million in revenue. Wow. Because he happened to be the rare combination of both. So, so uh. one out of 20 visionaries has the ability to do both. But once you reach capacity, you can't anymore. And somehow through a Herculean effort, he did it all the way to 100 million. But once he brought his integrator on, now he's over 200 million, I think. So again, once you bring your integrator in, you'll go to the next level. So that's... That's a stage in the life of building your business. You're going to have to decide when do I need my integrator. No, and that's awesome. It makes perfect sense. And if, actually, funny story is Mark was one of my original guests in the first year on. Uh, and we know each other pretty well, so that's awesome. that. That's awesome. And yeah, I mean, you know, that's one of the things I found out about myself over the years is like I'm a fast starter, vision, drive, drive, drive hard, get it done. And then it's like, all right, I need somebody there to pick up all of this that's happening and then continue to move it forward while I keep driving everything else down the yeah, path. Yeah, well, and please refer everyone to whatever episode that was since we're talking about it. They'll Yeah, we'll put the link down. Yeah, that'd be great. And uh, get to see me in probably year one of <laughs> Making <laughs> Bank know, Podcasting. Maybe you should do that then. Maybe you should have them back. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's all good. Good good call. So, yeah, guys, the link will be right here for uh, the episode with Mark Winters. We talk about Rocket Fuel, Integrator, and everything else. So, wrapping up here, um, I hope everybody was taking notes. Really listen to what Gino's saying. Most of you guys already have businesses. Maybe you're thinking about you know expanding or growing your business. Entrepreneurial Leap is an amazing way to kind of take a look at um, through the different tests or surveys that uh, Gino has to figure out where you're at, maybe aligning with the right type of business you have. Um, we've gone over some different uh, strategies and ideas so you can help clarify where you are in your business right now and what you need to do. So again, rewind, watch this again. Make sure you guys are sharing this. Share this with your entrepreneur friends. Help them out. You know, Help pay it forward. And, uh, and go back and continue to, you know, make sure you comment, ask questions. I always get back on things like that. And, you know, if Gino sees some of them, he might even comment back for you as well. So what's one last thing that you're like, oh man, I was hoping Josh was going to ask this, but he didn't that you just want to kind of wrap up and let everybody know. 
Yeah, you said something really good there that I think is so important for your audience to hear. And it's a it's a unintended benefit of this book, I would have never guessed. But if you are in our, an entrepreneur out there that has already taken your leap and you're either in a startup phase right now or you consider yourself to be a successful growing entrepreneur, the unintended benefit was for startups. The book is, like you said, an incredible checkup to make sure you're doing everything right that you're in the right business and you do have the six essential traits and where you are on that entrepreneurial range. And you may make some course corrections. The other was for a successful entrepreneur. When my clients read this book and other successful entrepreneurs, it just relights you up as an entrepreneur. It just gets you all the way back to the basics. It's like reading your life story, quite frankly. So it's incredibly validating. And so it's incredible what it's done for successful entrepreneurs. And so that's what I would leave you with. It's if, you, if you're looking for one of those two things, whatever stage you're in, you might find that incredibly beneficial. Awesome. And just, I mean, I, I actually picked up three copies. So we um, homeschool our kids and part of their course curriculum is entrepreneurship and learning. And so they've been through multiple courses and stuff like that. So that way they can dive in and, uh, you know, add this to their educational side of things as well. So it's nice to hear. Well, awesome. Gino, thank you for coming on Making Bank. Really appreciate your time today and an honor to have you on the show. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Josh. I am Josh Felber. You are watching Making Bank. Get out and be extraordinary.